the next chapter, chapter 31. باب قول الله تعالى ومن الناس من يتخذ من دون الله اندادا يحبونهم كحب الله. The chapter and he mentioned the verse and of mankind are some who take for worship others besides Allah as rivals to Allah. They love them as they love Allah. The issue of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and this is something that definitely uh, part of the Tawheed it's basically the asli, the origin of the deen of Islam. Uh, why? Because the ibadah is based on the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more the person perfect this quality in him, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means he's perfecting his religion of Islam. And any deficiency in it, it brought the deficiency in or brings the deficiency in the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart of the person. So that's why it's a quality that we have to perfect in our life and that is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So as we heard in the verse that uh, of mankind are some who take for worship others besides Allah as rivals. They love them as they love Allah. So the verse here mentions that these disbelievers, they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They love them as they love Allah. Right? So they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they had committed the shirk that they loved these idols or the things that they worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same way that they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that made them a disbelievers. That means the believers they have this love of ibadah, the love of the exaltation that is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not for the rivals and those who they worship these people besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the verse after that says, amanu ashaddu hubban lillah, That the believers, they have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than these, these believers, disbelievers love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they perfect the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts. The next verse, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَأُكُمْ وَأَبْنَأُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اَقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكٍ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Say if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your kindred, the wealth that you have gained, the commerce in which you fear a decline, and the dwellings in which you delight, all of these things are dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, alhamdulillah, and striving hard and fighting in His cause, then wait until Allah brings about His decision meaning his torment. This ayah is a test that in it all the different social relationships that people have in, on the face of earth, right? That is a cause for people to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is a cause for them to have a, a deficiency in their love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it's mentioned in the verse. The parents and the sons and so on as, as we heard, these things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not deny uh, these feelings from the heart of the believers but what is condemned here if it's been loved right uh, more than a person would love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is where it's been condemned which shows the obligation of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the obligation of loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the warning against those who would take these things in a way that they would uh, obey them in the disobedience of, disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, not to perfect the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart. And again, the verse definitely needs more explanation, more pondering over it in our lives, but it's a test to our lives and to our religion that how are we putting forward the orders of Allah or the orders of the parents or the, these types of relationship and the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes first or these types of relationships. Well, hadith an Anas radiallahu an anna rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam maqal la yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min waladihi wa walidihi wa nasi ajma'in which means none of you becomes a believer till he loves me more than his father and his children and all mankind. Reported by Bukhari wa Muslim. And the meaning of la yu'min wa ahadukum here, meaning that he would not perfect his iman. His iman would be deficient unless the love of the Prophet ﷺ in his heart is more than the love of his own children and his parents and all mankind. And this is a love that a Muslim choose because the Prophet ﷺ is the reason 
why Allah so, uh, the reason that me or the mean that people will be away from darkness and they were guided by the Prophet ﷺ and by the by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending him as guidance to mankind. So it shows the obligation of that. This is the love that has to be present in the heart. But the love of the Prophet ﷺ is because of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the love, uh, the pure love that every love after that depends on the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hearts. We love the Prophet ﷺ because of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and the love of the Prophet ﷺ is or comes first before any other human being other than the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, and it also shows that uh, the actions is part of al iman uh, because the love is an action, right? It's done by the heart. So it's also part of al iman that the Iman is not just a belief, but actions also is part of the Iman. Uh, and لا يؤمن وحدكم Denying the Iman does not make the person outside the fold of Islam, but it means a deficiency in one's Iman. And that the Iman, if it's truthful, if a person is truthful in his Iman, it has to show. It is not just, just something in the heart. It has to show in his actions, in his speech, if he is truthful in his belief, in his Iman, because loving the Prophet ﷺ is not just a feeling in the heart, it's a feeling in the heart and it's an actions by obeying the Prophet ﷺ, following his sunnah. Uh, we do not put forward any uh, opinion or any orders or anything when it comes to the sunnah, the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Once it's made clear to us that this is the way of the Prophet ﷺ, then definitely this is what we put forward as a result of the love of the Prophet ﷺ in the heart. And the next hadith states the same fact. حديث يقول ولهما عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم meaning by Anas رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ثلاث من كنا فيه وجد بهن حلاوة الإيمان أن يكون الله ورسوله أحب إليه مما سواهما whoever possesses the following three qualities will have the sweetness of iman of faith the one to whom Allah عز وجل and his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم are more beloved than anything else وَأَنْ يُحِبَّ الْمَرْءَ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ The one who loves another only for Allah's sake. وَأَنْ يَكْرَهَ أَنْ يَعُودَ فِي الْكُفْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ أَنْ قَذَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْهِ كَمَا يَكْرَهُ أَنْ يُقْذَفَ فِي النَّرِ The one who hates to convert to this belief after Allah has rescued him from it as he hates to be thrown into the fire. Reported by Bukhari Muslim. Three qualities. If it's not in the heart, then the person would never taste the sweetness of al-Iman. And these qualities, uh, if a person have deficiencies in it, he would have the deficiency also accordingly in the sweetness of al-Iman. So it has to be perfected. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are more beloved to the person than anything else. Uh, and this is as a result of understanding the purpose of our life and what is the uh, coming ahead. And that without that, a person would never be successful and saved from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it shows the obligations of that and the virtue of having this definitely before anything else. It shows the virtues of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is part of the tawheed, the origin of the tawheed. And that the believers, they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a pure love. Uh, and they love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa accordingly. He is the most among the human beings to be loved and to be followed and so on. And whoever have these three qualities, then uh, definitely he is among the best, as the Prophet ﷺ said that he would taste the sweetness of al-Iman. Uh, and that a person loving others for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. As a result of being slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and a person humbles himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so even his love is not for him. It is not owned by him. He subject his love to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him. So to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And after the person increasing his iman, he would reach this level. That he loves what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and he hates what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. He won't find himself liking what something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like or hates as it's mentioned in the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And accordingly people. The more people are righteous, the more they, he loves them for the sake of Allah because they are doing the things that is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more the people are disobedient to Allah or disbelievers and so on, he hates them as a result of that. Not just hating their actions, but he hates them also. And this is the, 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 the most just hate. It is not the hate of because of a race 
or because of uh, jahiliya issues it's because of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a result of this being the most just love is that once that person embraced the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this hate immediately becomes a perfect love and this is where the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a slave so it's not something that is based on other ways of jahiliya it is the the absolute justice and the person is just following the truth whatever it is and that a person would hate to be uh, renegade and to be back in the state of kufr the same way that he will hate to be thrown into the fire nobody would like to be thrown into the fire the believers they would rather be thrown into the fire and not to meaning not the hereafter meaning the fire a fire in this life for example and not to go back in matters of kufr otherwise in the hereafter when some say i don't care if i uh, be thrown into the hell fire uh, as long as i love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is definitely a deviation why because those who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have them in the hell fire are the enemies of allah right so they don't love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are the enemies of allah uh, so this is uh, with regarding to this hadith so it shows the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qulu an ibn abbas radiyallahu anhuma qal man ahabba fi llah wa abghada fi llah al hadith qabla dhalik another version the above mentioned hadith begins with the words la yajidu ahadun halawata al iman hatta yuhibba al mar'a la yuhibbuhu illa llah no one will find the sweetness of iman until and unless he loves the person loving him only for the sake of Allah and the three qualities that we heard. That means this is the way of perfecting the Iman and that comes with building the Iman with the good deeds. Uh, the next hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah Man ahabba fillah wa abghada fillah Whoever loves for the sake of Allah and hates for the sake of Allah wa wala fillah and befriends for the sake of Allah wa aada fillah and shows enmity for the sake of Allah fa innama tunalu wilayat Allahi bithalik which means would get Allah's friendship or wilaya, this close relationship that a person would reach this high level of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how a person would reach this level, not by inheritance or by uh, uh, fake things. It's by these actions and these acts of worship done by the heart and the different parts of the body, loving for the sake of Allah, hating for the sake of Allah, uh, having the friends and the support for the sake of Allah, and enmity also according and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And this is the pure slave of Allah, that he has nothing but to uh, submit himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Uh, without abiding by this, وَلَنْ يَجِدَ عَبْدٌ طَعْمَ الْإِيمَانِ وَإِنْ كَثُرَتْ صَلَاتُهُ وَصَوْمُهُ حَتَّى يَكُونَ كَذَلِكَ which he said that um, without abiding by this, no one can get the real taste of Iman, though he may have been a frequent offerer of Salah and fasts, even if he's making a lot of Salah, making a lot of fast, he would never reach this level of Al-Wilaya, to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be a wali and a close person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would never taste the sweetness of Al-Iman till these acts of worship has to be there. The love for the sake of Allah, the hate for the sake of Allah, and, and so on and so forth. يقول, وَقَدْ صَارَتْ عَامَّةُ مُؤَخَاتِ النَّاسِ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِ الدُّنْيَا وَذَلِكَ لَا يُجْدِي عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ And he said after that, Today, people keep relationship and love only for some worldly reason. But this will not provide them any benefit, meaning on the day of judgment. So uh, people, what is their relationship and their love and their hate and so on? It's all based on what their hearts are attached to. Their hearts are attached to this dunya. This is what their love and hate and the things that get them moving, whether it's wealth or desires of this life and so on. But for the believers, because the heart is attached to the hereafter, they understand that their life is for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So they perfect their worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. They perfect their love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perfecting it meaning that everything else and all love in one's life will be accordingly, will depend on the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Loving what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, hating what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates and so on and so forth. Otherwise, uh, this is definitely a deficiency. Even if he has the most salah and the most fasting, if he doesn't have this attitude of the love for the sake of Allah and hate for the sake of Allah, this would not uh, يعني, benefit him in such a way. And interpreting the verse, وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ Then all the relations will be cut off from them. 
Ibn Abbas said it means the love. In the day of judgment, these people, those who loved one another in this life because of the materialistic things, they will be enemies to each other in the day of judgment. The only love that would stay is the love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That's why no happiness on the face of earth or in the hereafter unless the matter is done for the hereafter and the hereafter alone. Everything else be, other than that is to be finished, has to be destroyed. People die, it, they become enemies to one another if the matter is just about this dunya, except the deeds that are done for the hereafter. This is what is everlasting happiness and one of which is the matter of love. So all the ties and all the goodness that people have together, if it's not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it becomes a source of misery and it's a must. Unless they would do it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also stated that this is what most of the people are. Their brotherhood and their good feelings is just based on materialistic benefits and matters of this dunya. And not the, 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 this high level of goodness and sweetness of al-iman that comes only by the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we would see also the beauty of the Tawheed. That everything is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is not, the human beings are human beings. Uh, that a person would follow the Prophet sallam, imitate the Prophet sallam, And the human beings uh, loving them and even loving the Prophet sallam, everything is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Everything that we seek is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We seek the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and so on and so forth. And it shows condemning the love for matters of this dunya or the hate for matters of this dunya. Leave that for the people. Don't uh, impurify yourself. Don't contaminate yourself with this. And instead a person would elevate himself to be pure away from that and to only do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. And this is definitely also one of the chapters that uh, we need to learn what are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, what are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates, what is the signs of a person having the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Definitely it's knowledge for a person to learn. But again the point of this chapter that this is part of the tawheed. And what negates that negates the Tawheed and the deficiency in that is a deficiency in the Tawheed.